today I want to speak about a very important secret when it comes down to ancestral healing, okay? And I shared this with one of my friends quite recently. And I think that it's very, very important that we try to do this, okay? So what I've discovered here is that you've got to understand that if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling ill, if you're feeling stuck, listening to music of your own culture, and I say of your own culture, like old songs, right, from your own culture, is going to help you gain mastery over this, okay? It's gonna help you gain mastery over this because it's connecting you to an ancestral consciousness, okay? And that ancestral consciousness is going to do a lot of healing for your subconscious mind as you're listening. Like for me, I'm Bengali, I'd listen to old Bangla songs like Kishore Kumar or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Like old Bengali songs that will help me integrate my emotions in that time. Just try it out. You'll be surprised at what comes up and what emotional releases that you might go through. Let's say that you are, um, you know, Chinese, you, you might find an old Chinese song of your ancient culture or uh, maybe a war song of your Nordic lineage or something like this, right? That gives you that sense of internal strength from your ancestors onto you. Very, very important, but oftentimes overlooked by a lot of, you know, mystic scientists. So start to understand that you have a control over your own healing. And the world is always, the universe is always just telling you, your wish is my command. So if you say, uh, this is not gonna work, your wish is my command. If you say, this is uh, gonna be an incredible day today, the universe is saying your wish is my command, okay? So it's always listening to you. It's always listening, it's always recording you. The Akashic Records is always recording you, okay? So you gotta understand like, okay, since I'm being recorded, since I'm, uh, you know, I, I've been captured in this algorithmic soup, right? Up into uh, the, the, the cloud service, the, the, the third eye cloud right up there. Actually, the, the, the Vajrayana people, uh, Vajrayana people, I say, you know, the Vajrayana monks, they believe that there's actually uh, different uh, downloads that you can get from the clouds and from the sky. Uh, they're called turtons, and they, they're they like certain clues you can access. This is where the term uh, Daka comes from. Uh, a Dakini is a cloud walker, okay? Or a skywalker, in a sense, where the name Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker came from, right? So the flow Jedis know that there's a deeper meaning to the term Skywalker, right? It's not what people may think it is. And a lot of these movies, what they do is they take a lot of concepts from these ancient myths, mythologies, you know, uh, ancient cultural anecdotes, and they make it a part of their movie, right? So what they're doing is they're using the strength of the past to reinforce their strength in the present, okay? And also, if you really start to understand that your future can also be determined like this. So I want you to have this visualization right now. Just imagine this, okay? Try doing this the next time that you feel in a negative state or, or out of your flow, okay? Try doing this. I want you to imagine your culture, okay? And I want you to go 100 years, 200 years, 300 years into the future, okay? And now start to understand, just, just make a mental leap, a quantum leap, a jump with me right now. And just envision what is that culture like? How has, like for instance, if I imagine Indians uh, going into the future, like eons from now, I can imagine like almost uh, walking characters of the Ramayana, right? Like, or the Mahabharata. 
like characters that are, are walking the earth again with these gold metallic plates and like you know the, these vests and this is my own creativity obviously right however it's it's doing something to me right my human system my human body is reacting to this visualization heavily and why is that because there was a part of these myths again you got to understand that that stuff that i just mentioned is from the past right like the Mahabharata was written a long time ago, the Bhagavad Gita was written a long time ago. But what are these future renditions of this? You get what I'm saying? Like what is the Upanishads of the future? That's what I want to learn and that's what inspires me. So then I become a person who's peering over the edge of the future, which is a, a, a time dilation that is so inspiring. Whenever you see inspiring people, coaches per se, they're looking towards your future and their future, okay? And this kind of futuristic thinking is as equally as beneficial as thinking of the past and you know listening to these old songs. So having that sense of time control, right? Time management or time regulation, let's call it, okay? Um, will be very, very powerful in achieving your optimal state of mind, okay? So the way that I've always described it is the yogis always look at the past like a library. So they're just kind of taking out a book and they're putting it back, right? Oh yeah, that thing happened in third grade. Let me just look at it. Oh yeah, and how does that apply to my life now? Okay, got it, right? That's just how they relate to, they, they're not like taking out the books, right? The books are getting overdue, stuck in the subconscious, you know? sitting there collecting cobwebs, collecting dust. No, these old books, they've been cleaned, they're, they're kept back and they're used as a reference, okay? So this is what we call a reference experience, okay? An experience that gives you some level of proof. You need a strong sense of beliefs. And if you have limiting beliefs, you understand that the table that is on top of the belief, like let's say that the limiting belief is I'm not good enough. Now the, the legs of the table, right, are the proof or the evidence that you have to collect in order for you to strengthen and hold that table up. The table of the belief is held up based on the proof or the legs that you've given it. Okay, so you might say that I'm not confident with women, or you might say that, oh, I'm not good enough at, you know, uh, speaking in public or you could say oh I'm not you know I don't feel good uh, being vulnerable or whatever it is whatever your limiting belief is right you will start to understand that there are certain memories right and certain instances in your life that get you to perpetuate that specific belief so you have to make a case for yourself like a lawyer Right? You have to make a case for yourself where you have to disprove those old beliefs to yourself, to your own mind, to your consciousness. So if you're saying I'm not confident around women, get around women and start behaving confidently. It's as simple as that, man. Now you have a reference experience. You get what I'm saying? And from that reference experience, now you can, what you're doing with the reference or the past is you're adding or amplifying the belief that is already there. You get what I'm saying? So once, once you understand, okay, these are the beliefs that I want to strengthen and these are the tables that I don't want in my home, bro. Get the, get the fuck out of here with these tables, okay? Like, honestly, I don't want these gosh darn god dang tables. Let me get rid of these tables, man. There's way too many tables, bro. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's start to understand that your past and your future is coming from this sense of eternal nowness, which is the timeline right now. So you can only access the past and the future through the mind, which is going into your thoughts, right? And presence is through feeling. So you're feeling through into the now using your senses. 
So when you say, uh, I'm stuck, I'm in my mind, well, yeah, that's most people's experience. Okay, you gotta understand that. Who has taught, like, embodiment? What, what Was embodiment even a term in, like, 2012? And, like, you know, before all these, you know, uh, what, what, what do we call them? What do we call them? Woke coaches, I guess you could say, came along and introduced this term. Was embodiment even a term back in the day? I don't know. Maybe it was, right? Somatic psychotherapy. We, we can talk about it scientifically, but let's start to understand that there is something deep about feeling through your feelings. And it's as simple as that, and it can be as simple as that, right? Which is feeling through your feelings just means that you've added a full stop to the reoccurring you know, uh, loop in a sense. So we all have these types of, you know, like some scars or whatever you want to call them, right? In a sense, uh, I feel like a celebrity right now walking these streets, goddamn. So anyway, <laughs> um, let's say you have these some scars, right? These broken records or loops in your mind. They just keep coming up again and again. What you want to be doing is you want to almost add uh, like a song to that mix, right? That creates almost like a remixed experience of that, right? And so once you create a remixed experience of an old experience, you will start to catch your self-sabotage and almost feel like an inside joke with your self-sabotage, right? Like when it happens, you laugh at yourself instead of judging yourself. And that gives you a sense of power in terms of like how you can control and really optimize your life to this level, okay? If you can optimize it to this level and you understand how to go about it, now you can just be free with it, man. You can just chill. It's like learning that quote, right? It's like learning to play the musical instrument, learning the rules and then forgetting the rules and just playing. And I think we forgot that ability of like, just like, for instance, let's say you're fighting martial arts, right? In that state, you're not going to be like, oh, I remember that thing that my coach taught me back. You know, you're like, you're trapped. You're maybe in a triangle choke, right? You're like going through the motions. You're like, what, what is even going on right now, right? My, com my logical mind can't even comprehend this. It is only through the emotions and feeling through what I'm feeling through that I'm actually gonna, you know, reach some consensus with this thing or get to some kind of, you know, conclusion. You know, bro, I get it. So in a sense, if you really want to understand the the world view that you're truly creating, that you're living in, you got to understand that the world doesn't have to look the way that it looks right now. Okay? Hear me out here. This is really deep. So the perspective that you carry through your narrative, through the storyline that you're telling yourself, okay, that you're weak, that you're afraid, that you're not good enough, that you're shy, whatever it is, whatever storyline that you're telling yourself right now, you are perpetuating that some scar until you can become a DJ with that, right? With that experience, right? Once you become a disc jockey with this experience, the disc jockey, right? The discs of the chakras, you, you can become like a, oh man, that's deep, right? Oh man, Whew. some people got that. I, I mean, I got it at least. So anyway, Whew. Yeah, gang, that's right, that's right. That's how I feel right now, bro. That's actually how I, and like sparks coming out. Woo. I feel like a dragon. I feel like an atmospheric, you know, monstrosity, an etheric monstrosity. That's what I feel like when walking these streets. Walking these streets so long, holding back. In my hometown, I totally butchered that song, but let's keep going until we go on. All right. So yeah, your relationship to your past, your ancestral healing. You got to understand the ancestors go into the future, the future ancestors, right? So you are actually an ancestor. Think about this. Oh, oh, that's got to hit some of you deep into the soul, the soul crevice spot right there, that sweet spot in the soul. Some of you are going to be like, oh, man, I'm a future ancestor. What are you talking about, man? Like, that's a lot of responsibility, bro. Do you want like the the future kids of the, of the future, right? To look back and be like, 
Yeah, my dad was kind of a loser, man. He never really talked to anyone. He didn't really do much. You know, he kind of just showed up and did his, like, like he, he was kind of a normie, bro. Like, do you want, do you want your future, 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 like, you know, instead of grandkids, I, I, I'm sure we can think of another term, right? Like, uh, I don't know, future kids? Nah, my creativity is working in terms of that right now. But anyway, think of them, right? Re reacting back to the past and being like, yeah, you know, that guy from the year 2023, yeah, yeah, he's kind of cool. He was okay, I mean, I don't really know him. I, I don't really recommend him or his services. I don't know. He was kind of okay, you know? He kind of just showed up, did some things. <laughs> no, bro. You, you want to be, like, remembered as an, as an iconic, like, you know, substrate of this universe, right? Like, some of us are mature souls. Some of us are old souls. Some of us are infant souls. And all that means is it's just how much you've reincarnated, okay? So if you, uh, and transcend, transcendental souls is very, very rare. That's like almost like you have to be higher dimensional or Arcturian or something to get to that stage. But, so we're not even covering that. That's like less than 1%, right? So let's say that you're an old soul like myself. Like I feel very connected to the old soul. Uh, and I notice myself having these visions of my past. And if you've never done a past life regression, I'd highly recommend that you at least check it out because it will give you an experience of your subconscious mind and uh, you might reach very interesting conclusions with that. Um, I've done a few myself and I've guided people through a few myself, including in some of my programs and things like this. But I do it very selectively, so I don't know, have a conversation with me to see if you resonate with that. But irregardless, you know, it's not always like, oh, I'm gonna be this beautiful princess when I, you know, re reincarnate or like in the past, right? Or even sometimes I would almost see it in a different dimension or like in the future. Like in my one, I didn't see someone in the past. I saw like almost a mystical dude holding like an orb staff right like an orb staff in the hand and then when i looked down at my feet i saw like like very interesting like curly toed type of you know indian shoes and uh, <laughs> he was like a walking mystic philosopher uh healer i don't know what he was man but it was a very intense experience just going back to that memory and that was all from me, my subconscious mind. Maybe it's what I prefer. Maybe it's created. Maybe it's placebo. I don't know. But all I know is, what's good, girl? <laughs> all I know is, I'm uh, going along this path working, this journey, trusting in my faculties and understanding that there's more to be revealed. And that's the mindset that I hold. There's more to be, there's always more to be revealed. Right, And as things come to light, or, or more clarity, you could say, you start to understand that, man, this life can get very, very interesting the moment you understand that I'm not concluding something, or I'm not saying it's exactly like this. But sometimes we have to accept what's happening to us, make sense of it, and add a full stop in our own minds just so we can move along, okay? If you have a problem that you've been kind of ruminating over years and years and years and years, you finally need to put a full stop into that, okay? Block that person, do that thing, okay? That you need to do that you've been putting off, okay? It, it can only get so far and you have such a tolerance level, you know? Like, you guys are way too nice, some of you. You're way too nice people and that's weird to say, right? Because it's not a niceness that's coming from a genuine like compassion and help for the planet, but it's a niceness that's been, you know, delved into a, a, a past traumas and, you know, miscalibrations and mental health that's just been fucking you up, okay? I'll be honest. So let's start to heal 
those things that we're running from and understand that your ancestors, you can call upon your ancestors any time that you choose, okay? A lot of people say ancestors and don't let people, you know, message you. I say, your ancestors want to talk to you. Don't listen to those people, okay, bro? I don't even care what you say. Like, if you're trying to scam people using ancestors, don't, your ancestors looking at that person doing that is probably just so messed up, right? So that sales tactic is not gonna work because it's been out, it's been overplayed so much, okay? We see people the same level of OnlyFans girls like creating accounts and stuff like this nowadays. We also see these like fake psychic accounts, right? Of people who are taking the services of like legit people who are doing this kind of intuitive work and then charging like paid sessions, even though some of those people don't even do psychic paid sessions or whatever. You know what I mean? This has been happening. This identity theft has been happening in this day and age. So I want you to watch out for this because the ancestors would never want you to actually, you know, fall for these tricks and this manipulation like this. Your ancestors want to support you and uh, they're not always thinking about you. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? They got their own things to do. Your ancestors aren't sitting there being like, I wonder what Fred's up to right now, you know? No, it's like they are, you know, transcending limits and, and going forward. And that's what you got to do, man. You just got to go forward. You got to just keep moving and don't let anybody catch you. You got to be like a mud fish, right? Like a fish in the mud. And, and you try to catch a fish in the mud and you just can't. You just can't catch that fish, bro. You can try, but it's going to be in the dirt and the mud. Right? And, and you're like, uh, like the person trying to catch that fish is like, oh, this is dirty. This is getting kind of muddy, you know? Oh man, I don't really like fish anyway. But you as a fish, you're just like, right? You're just going forward. You're just in your own reality. You're dodging, you're weaving, you're going through the traffic and you are centered, which means what? You come back to the self. You come back to awareness. That's what it means, right? The, the thing looking behind your eyes, that is the real you, okay? Not the body itself, it's just pure awareness. It's the one observing everything, okay? And that's why I believe a lot of people who are very good observers in this life are very good at figuring this game out. Hit me a like with that if you guys agree with that. Let's get it. Upward Spiral Gang, may we never be the same again. Ancestral healing for days. Let's get it. I hope that you transform. Let's go.